Thank you for joining us as we present another Spirit-filled message by RCCG ICC UK, the home of kings and priests. Please grab your Bible, notepad and your pen as you're about to listen to this transformational message. God bless you. Over time we've learned that honour cannot be earned. Honour is a gift that you give because you know God. So if you are waiting for somebody to earn your honor before you give it, you've missed it. That was what the son of sons of one of the son of Noah, the mistake he made, because his father was drunk. So he thought because of that he had a, a legitimate ground to dishonor him, and he dishonor him, and a curse rest upon his seed. Or what about um, Queen Queen Vashti in Esther chapter one? Queen Vashti too made a big hero. He thought because the king was drunk. That gives her license. So go, go, go and get her. Go and get her here. And she dishonored. The Lord will help us as a people, as a church, in the name of Jesus. In fact, I'm persuaded that God is already doing something great in our life. Jehovah is doing a great thing. Amen. So as we move on today, as we move on today, and as we begin to draw some conclusion on this second habit, amen, I want to speak briefly and make emphasis on the element that we are created for honor. Amen. Because honor, honor is not a gift. Honor is what God has created us for. We are created for honor. And honor is both spiritual, habit, and a culture. So honor begins from the spirit, it becomes a habit, and it becomes a culture of a family, of a church, of a people. Amen. Let us turn our Bible for my main text will be Proverbs 8. From verse 3 to 6. Created for glory and honor. Hallelujah. If you help me quickly. Proverbs. Or Psalms rather. Psalms. Psalm 8. Psalm 8. What did I say Proverbs? Psalm 8. And I'm going to read from verse 3 to 6. It said when I consider your heaven. The works of your finger, the moon and the star which you have ordained. He said, What is man that you are mindful of him? What is the son of man that you visit him? I forgot to visit you, it's an honor. If the king comes to visit us here, he has honored us. Hallelujah. He said, What is man that you are even mindful of him? What is the son of man that you will visit him? He said, for you have made him a little lower than the angel. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. He said, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. And you have put all things under his feet. Hallelujah. That's God's word to you. He said, that's what they call the unchanging purpose of God. The unchanging purpose of God. Right from the book of Genesis, when God was creating man, God created him for honor and for dominion. True or false? Right from Genesis. That's what they call the unchanging purpose of God. God created him for, for, for honor and for glory when he created man. Then even after the fall, the Bible tells us that God did not change his mind. Hallelujah. And that's what this passage is telling us after the fall. That God said, look, I have created him for glory and for honor. Somebody say, God has created me for glory and for honor. Or say like you are convinced, God has created me for glory and for honor. Say, as part of the persuasion of my faith, I believe that I am created and destined for glory and honor. Say, I'm persuaded that I'm, I'm created for glory and honor. No, no, say it, say it. It doesn't matter what the circumstance may be. This is who God say you are. 
and this is the purpose why god said he created you in the beginning in genesis the bible said he created them and he gave them dominion he gave them he created them for glory and for honor to and gave them dominion and even after the fall the bible tells us that god did not change his mind he said he created them for glory and honor in revelation chapter 5 the bible say 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 he made them that, that he may create them that they will, they will have glory and honor and they will have dominion revelation chapter 5 verse 10 hallelujah amen so god has not changed his plan hallelujah yeah. he said and and i've made us king and priest to unto god that we shall rule and reign here on the earth so in the beginning god said yes for dominion for reigning after the fall god said no it, it has not changed in the last book of the bible god said no 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 he has created us for glory and for honor that we may reign here on the earth if you are in search of your identity who god say you are i want you to be rest assured that god on god's own end it's a settled it's a done deal i created you for significance i created you for glory i created you for honor and i pray that we will walk in that in the name of jesus christ hallelujah but the bible tells us something in psalm 47 psalm 47 verse 20 psalm 47 verse 20 amen psalm 47 verse 20 psalm 47 verse 20. that a man who is in honor but that knows it not is like a beast that perish yet hallelujah amen okay they're not following me is it there now Oh, 49, 49, 20. Psalm 49, 20. Sorry about that. 49, 20. You can turn your Bible to it. You can turn your Bible to it. Say, a man who is in honor, yet does not understand, is like a beast that perishes. So God said, on my own part, I have created you for glory and honor. Right from Genesis, he said, I have given you dominion over all the works of my hand over all my creation i have placed you to be a honorable person a person of honor a person who will dispense honor a person who will live honorably a person who will be god honoring and men honoring he said but if a person has been created for honor and they don't know it say there will be no difference between them and the beast that perish in the name of Jesus, as we go through this subject of honor, as we learn, God himself will quicken something on the inside of each and every one of us. Whatever price it requires to live a life of honor. Because sometimes honor can be challenging. Think of Jesus Christ going to John the Baptist to go and be baptized by him. He has to humble himself, isn't it? In order to enter into glory. Is that not where the challenge comes in? The place where we have to humble ourselves in order to enter into the place of dominion and glory. So Jesus has to go to John at the dirty water of Jordan where John himself was not looking like it. John was a, a raster he was somebody that nobody in israel would even want to talk to he had no good wardrobe he has no good good fashion sense and yet for jesus christ to enter into the glory and the domain of his calling and his assignment here on the earth he had to go through a journey baptist he had to humble himself and go that he might be baptized by john then the Bible says, if a man has been created for glory and honor, but the man does not know it, the man will live less than what God has created him for. In the name of Jesus, you will not live less than God has created you for in Jesus' mighty name. Luke chapter 7 verse 30. Luke chapter 7 verse 30. And particularly, I think I want to read that from the Amplified. Luke chapter 7 verse 30. Amen. From the Amplified. The Bible says the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they did something. 
they annul the purpose of God, the plans of God for their life. Because why? They rejected something. He said, but the Pharisees and the lawyers and of the Mosaic law, they annul and rejected and brought to nothing the purposes of God concerning them by refusing and not being baptized by Jesus Christ, by John the Baptist. Are we getting this? So Jesus Christ in the flip, he entered into the fullness of his glory and the assignment and the purpose of God for his life by humbling himself so that John would baptize him. So the, great, the, the, the only person that can annul the plan of God for your life, not those wishes and wizards, not those passing comments somebody made about you. Not those cares. The Bible says, curse, curse, let shall not alight. In fact, the most potent force that can annul, that can reject, that can refute, that can overturn and overthrow the plan, the great plan of God for your life is actually you. He said, these guys, they annulled it. They annulled it. Because they have created you for glory and honor. But they annulled it. They rejected it. And they brought it to nothing. May the great plan that God has for you, for your children, for your destiny, may not be annulled in the name of Jesus. Mary, Mary, Mary. Because I know the thought that I think towards you. A thought of good. To bring you to an expected end. And God had declared what that expected end is. God had proclaimed what that expected end is. The expected end is glory and honor. But if you do not walk in the things God is speaking to you, you can as well annul, bring to nothing all that God has planned for your life that will not be your testimony that will not be my testimony in jesus mighty name amen matthew chapter 15 matthew chapter 15 jesus said these guys they draw near to me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me Brethren, this is the number one way men annul the purpose of God. The good plan of God for their life. Say they draw near, they draw near to me. And when he says they draw near, immediately you know that it's folks that came to church. The ones that are not drawing near, they are not in church. Say they draw near. They draw near. They draw near to me with their mouth. They sing praise and worship. They talk all the Christian lingos. Say they even honor me with their lips. But I give you my heart. I give you my all. Have your way in me. It says, but their heart is far from me. In Malachi, God began to challenge them. In Malachi chapter 1. From verse 6, he began to challenge them. He said, okay, let me even demote myself. Say, even if I demote myself and I become like one of your governors. Say, where is my honor? Say, for they who honor me, then will I honor. Is that not what he said? He said, even if I be one of your governors. Or if I be your employer, your master. He said, there's a way you respond to your employer. I see you Monday to Friday. There's a way you respond towards them. Say, so even if I be your employer, where is my reverence? The one that the Bible said they annul. They annul the purpose of God. They began to play I service with God. They began to play. He said they draw near to me with their with their mouth. He said, okay, as a son honors his father, a servant is master. If then I am your father, he said, where is my honor? If I be a master, if I be your employer, he said, now where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. 
So it means that each and every one must check themselves so that you are not, in a sense, annulling, bringing to naught the purpose of God for your life. On his own part, he said, I have created you for glory and for honor. I have created you for dominion that you will reign and you will rule here on the earth. He said, but because of lack of humility, guess what? They couldn't walk as Jesus walked. The Bible tells us in Philippians, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, said, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who though being equal with God, he never thought equality with God something to grasp. But, but he, he brought himself down. He brought himself down. The Bible said to even the, the dead, a dead on the cross, the lowest kind of dead. So that he can be able to walk with God. Somebody say you must come seven steps downwards in order to be able to ascend seven step upward that's their praise say that passage is actually the seven step downward that jesus had to come in humility in order so that he can walk in honor and in glory so part of it is what we saw playing out in how he related with john the baptist because he had come to recognize the God in John the Baptist. Can you recognize the God? Say so true honor begins from the heart. True honor begins from the heart. If it doesn't begin from the heart, it's high service. True honor begins from here. That's why Jesus said, they draw near to me with their mouth. So, so it's not so much of what they're saying. They honor me with their lips. Yes, we must say the right thing. But that their heart is not in it. True honor begins from the heart. True honor has no off and on switch. If you can switch it on and switch it off, then it's not the one that came from above. In fact, it doesn't have a horn and off switch. You see it in the life of the disciple. In fact, even where they disagree, they remain respectful and honoring. Oh, Acts Paul. In Acts of Apostle, Agrippa was not a born again king. But Paul was so honoring. He was cultured. That's why somebody said the Holy Spirit is never rude. Whenever you find yourself being rude, you are not led by the Holy Spirit. Regardless of if, if your king be King Saul, David was not rude one time to King Saul because he was a man of honor. Is there any man of honor in this place? Is there any woman of honor here? Eh, they want to kill me eh, because of that, because of that. Oh, come on. Didn't you say what they say about me? Didn't you say how they are maligning my character? Because of that, the hooligan in you rise up. <laughs> now, so I've created you for honor. True honor has no off and on button. May God himself teach us as a church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So God begins to speak to us severally about this thing. And even um, on Friday, we we're taking back that actually honor is manifested in our thought. How we think in our thought. How we think. The Bible says something very instructive. I think it must be from the Good News, uh, Good News Bible. I think it's um, Proverbs 
Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Say, be careful how you think because your thought will shape your life. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thought. If you don't have respect and honor in your thinking, you are in trouble. So now we need to do a total overhaul. So now it's not so much of what we say or how we act. It's not the yes sir, yes sir. God bless you sir. God bless. I say even to certain level. That those who will not respect um, our general of us here. But once they hear he's in town, I say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You just see all those things. Come on. Who are we fooling? The same instruction the man said, you are the one who. Then when he shows up, hey, that is in town. Come on. In your thought, how you think. He said, be careful how you think. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart. I can't hear you, you're not confused. As a man thinketh in his heart. So this thing we call honor. It's not packaging. It's not packaging. So be careful how you think. Be careful how you think. Because your thought will shape your life. Some say thought has substance. And if you think one way, you, you see where people say, Oh, bless you. Well, hey, hey, they, they do all the right thing. They say all the right thing. The moment the person walk away, they just begin to. Is that not what we learned last week? Eh? The things you speak in your tent. That was what happened with the, the siblings of Moses, Marian and Aaron. They began to talk about Moses in their tent. Saying all sorts about him having married the Ethiopian woman, the African woman. Even Moses, when, <laughs> the Bible didn't even tell us Moses heard about it. Well, maybe when Moses heard it, oh, well, it's family problem. It's family. God said, no, 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 no. It's not family problem. Perhaps and God had them. And God summoned, summoned them. Don't you fear God? Because the honor ultimately destroys. May God help us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So honor begins from your heart. And it's in your thought, how you think. It begins from your spirit man. Jesus said they honor me with their lips, but their heart is not in this thing. Eh? It goes to your thought, your perception, how you see things, how you see people, how you see especially those whom God has said you should honor. Hallelujah. God, please help us. So that our heart will be in the right place. I've got a list here of, um, actually got it online, of different people that we should honor. Let me just um, read for purpose of uh, whatever. He said the first person that God asks us to honor is himself. You know, God is a God that demands honor. There were years ago, I said, no, I don't demand honor. I will look to command it. God said, are you greater than I that ask for it? Try and not demand honor from your children. Just as prayer must be taught, honor must be taught. The disciple of Jesus said, Lord, teach us how to pray. As John the Baptist taught his disciple how to pray. Even the Pharisees, they taught their people how to pray. Even it's an hypocrite prayer. Same thing, honor must be taught. Honor must be demanded. So the first person you must honor is God. Because he demands it. He demands it. Because if you don't get the honor for God, 
There are so many honor you'll be missing. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Then the second person here is your parents, which we also learned on Friday when our youth pastor was teaching. Eh? Your parents, parents, you must honor parents. You must honor your father and your mother. And they say that's a, that's a, that's a commandment with a promise. Amen. Anybody that's in a father position, you must honor them, not just your biological. You set your heart to honor them. That is, it will be your default mode. Is that not what habit is? Habit is the things you do that you are no longer even thinking about it. It's no longer subject to the parliament of your mind or your you are not thinking about it. That's your default mode. So when honor begins from your spirit, it becomes a habit. Then that habit in turn now becomes a culture. A culture in your small family. A culture in the church of God. And um, somebody said culture is not the kind of food people eat, the kind of clothes they wear, and things like that. That's not culture. Culture is the prevailing way of thinking of a people. Culture is the prevailing way of thinking. So this, this habit and culture of honor is something that each and every one of us must intentionally set our heart to work in. Say, honor your parents. Exodus chapter 20. And in other passages, the Bible tells us about honoring a parent. Honor your spouse. First Peter 3 7. Honor your spouse. And also Ephesians, Ephesians 5 33. Honor for spouse. Let's also speak about honor those who are older. Honor those who are older. Leviticus 19 32. Leviticus 19 32. Honor your bosses, your employer at work. Honor them. Honor them. First Peter. 218. Honor your church leaders. Honor your church leaders. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Honor your church leader. In fact, the Bible says, give them double honor. Especially those who labor over you in the word and in teaching. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. Eh? As you two you are working on it, me too, I'm working on it. Amen. When I arrive in this country, you know, it was natural to me from the village I was coming from to pray for all the people that God has put over my life and things like that. Then whenever I arrived in this country, I first look around, God, who should I be honoring in this domain? Just show them to me. And God showed me several people that I should be honoring. And one of them happened to be Pastor Agu. Because, of course, he was the head of the Redeemed Christian Church of God in the United Kingdom and Ireland. And I discovered that it was not natural to me for me to pray for him. I did something after one FOL. I took the FOL magazine. I got my scissors. I cut out his picture. I put it in my walk, my drawer. I said, Lord, every time I open this drawer, I must, I must utter a word of prayer to bless him. So that it will become my habit and my default. I will think well of him. I will speak well of him. In fact, even if you see the way I still talk about him, I, you know that I, I've come to love him. The, the person you pray to, the one you pray with and the one you pray for, you get intimate with them. Say so that it can become a habit and a default mode for me. Each time I pull my drawer, yes. Father Lord, bless his ministry. His home, I commit into your hand, oh God. Lord, I thank you for his life, for he's a goodly man. In the name of Jesus, I began to speak every day. My office was in Joseph then. When I pulled the drawer, I prayed for him. So that I can enter a default mode. As for somebody I prophesy and I pray for. Until I heard Pastor Andrew Adelike say the same thing. Hey. He said, this man, God has put my talk in his mouth. See, even when I'm driving past, I just release a prayer. I say, glory be to God. May the Lord teach and help us in the name of Jesus. Especially as many of us who have set our heart. That we will walk in the fullness of God's purpose for our life. We will not annul it. 
My mouth will not annul the purpose of God for my life. It will not overthrow it. My habit, my habit will not set at naught the things God has already prophesied. I will walk in it in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is not to, this is not to brag in any way. Even you guys, your pastor, Pastor Chuka. Ah, I took some step back. Lord, is that the man? All right. The shepherd you have taken from me. Okay. The Bible says he will give them shepherd according to his heart. You don't choose them by yourself. Just as you didn't choose your mother and your father. And you've got to honor them. I said, God, is that the one you have chosen? No problem. Uh, I, I told you guys, I shared some testimony. The last time. Eh? By the grace of God, I'm still working on it. And I'm making progress. I'm not where I used to be anymore. By the time General Vasia came and um, Pastor Dupe came to do the pre-inspection of that, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Her eyes was like uh, going like fire. Yes, yes, yes. She saw one pastor's wife. He said, is that the dress you're wearing? Go and change now. Uh, uh, you know that kind of level. She, she quickly pulled his one. She, goes, eh? Eh? She, she said to me, is something wrong with you guys? Is that the length you want the man to walk? I said, no, no, no. Yes, there's actually an elevator in the other side. I'm just showing you so that you can inspect everything. Before, come. I said, I was running. Then suddenly we got into an elevator where we were together. And she became quiet. And she said, thank you. I said, what for man? He said, for what you do. How you serve the man of God. In the order of the redeemed Christian Church of God, sometimes pastor when I'm preaching a place, people send me on a radio. They send me on one pastor wrote, Pastor Timothy, as a son labor alongside his father. We have seen a hallmark. Man, that pastor, I said, talk about this. I said, because me too, I'm still working on it. I, I have not arrived. We are in ministers' conference. Five and six, I defer, I defer like this. What does he need? What does he need? They're, all of them, they are looking at me. What, what does he need? What does he need? What does he require to carry out the assignment? What does he need? Then somebody will be here. He will call. Somebody will do like the key. I think God, me. Me, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. The Lord will help and teach us in the name of Jesus. Is there somebody who wants to walk in the fullness of their calling in God? If you don't learn to mount up on this ladder of honor. If you don't learn how to climb to higher ground. The ladder they used to enter higher ground in God is called honor. You see, when parents tear down the ladder of honor in their home, around the dining table, they destroy their children. They forget that the same one who asks you to honor like this, like this, like this, is the same one who has the children to honor you. Then the day you want honor from the children, they don't know how to mount up the ladder. Because you have used your mouth to tear it down. Never you in your home. You know those, there's those who like to talk about politicians? Like uh, our prime minister now. They will just run him down, run him down around the table. Your children will be hearing you. You know ladders has each one you're removing. It makes it harder for your children to mount up on the ladder of honor. Is it not God? The Bible says in Romans that it is an ordinance of God. You are, you, are, you are pitching a tent against the ordinance of God. The God you say you love. Is it not the one who asks you to honor them? We honor because God said. Paul said, I would have not known covetousness is a sin. If God has not said to me, thou shalt not covet. Because we are submitted and yielded to the ordinance of God. That's why we do what we do. May the Lord help us as a people in Jesus' mighty name. I could share many testimonies with you regarding honor. Let me, let, me, let me share one quickly. During the COVID, I've shared it before. During the COVID, we've got a lot of reverend ministers here in our Chadwell Heat area. There was a time when Bakin and Dagna was the high of the storm. In the COVID time, the highest number in Europe was in Bakin and Dagna. So something happened. Um, Wall Street, everybody was looking for news. So they pinned down where, where is the location. 
I'm sure they would have gone to um, the Church of England headquarters. They say, okay, the reverend that we have in that location, they mention the name of the reverend, is the one down St. Charles. Then the pressman went to interview him. And after finish interviewing him, he said, well, that's our own experience. Of course, they are predominantly Caucasian. He said, if you want to get a balanced view, you can try next door. That's how they mentioned my name are you are you with it they will not mention your name if they don't see you like somebody who is humble enough and who is honoring the places honor will take you your qualification will not carry you there guess what when they they came to interview on sunday uh, we were praying and i was leading prayer and i declared that you know what? This whole COVID thing is like a whirlwind. And it will go back to where it has come from. Yeah, you know, you know, I was leading prayer, like by the grace of God, passionately. So on Monday, they came to interview. And, oh, I said, interestingly enough, we were just praying about this thing. That it has been like a whirlwind. And we are prophesied in God that it will go back to where it comes from. In the name of God. The same way it came, that's how he's going to go back. Go back. Guess what? Yours truly appear on Wall Street Journal. I said, ah, Pastor, you can't Pastor, Pastor, that's big time. Wall Street Journal? Ah! Yeah, because they particularly, you know, you know, press, they like catching news. The way I phrased it. Even the people that came to interview, they didn't put them there. Yeah? Yeah? Say, it's like a whirlwind. No, no, that's not the end of it all. When Wall Street Journal finished publishing, me, I don't even know. By the time they call me, then a radio station from America called. They say, we have 15 million listenership. See if you can grant us this interview. God said to me, son, if I want the whole world to hear your voice in 24 hours, I can do it. So we are so on so radio station. Yeah? In fact, they had already come to look at the video of your church. I mean, alternate that prayer. The, one of the shocking things is that you know he's here that I scream. When they call him, oh, hello, this is Toby here. You see, you see, it's amazing. You on the pulpit, how you are sounding like a mouse now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, if you can give this interview, we have 15 million listenership. How did that come about? Oh no. Oh no. Benny Hinn told a testimony. He said he went to minister in a country and there were it just a few thousands of people gathered. I said no. The grace of my God in my life is more than that. I will show up in a place and it's just fifty thousand people. He said so God he went to God. What happened? God told him honor. So the next time he was going to go and minister, he said, God, which people should I be honoring here? He saw there are, is it Orthodox church leaders? You know, we Pentecostal, we feel like we are Jim Jim. They don't, they don't carry the, the spirit. We, we are more Jim Jim. How can you open Benny Hinn? Go to. Say then, he did something. He went to see them. Say, you know what? I'm Benny Hinn. I've not come to pull any man down. I've just come to your country to lift Jesus up. Say, come, come, come. Say, they said they will give him 10 minutes. Say the 10 minutes almost turned to one hour. She said, I didn't come to honor. I, I didn't come here to. I just came to evangelize. I just came to lift Jesus up. I didn't come to criticize. I didn't come to anything. He said, by the time that program will be run again, I can't remember the figure, 400 to half a million people gathered. Honor. Honor. I pray that the Lord will give you each one of us a revelation of this subject of honor in the name of the place your qualification cannot get you. Doors will open. Was it not last month? Uh, the uncle we came to say uh, we're now in a police monitoring thing. Honor. No, we recognize you in this community and we see what God is doing, doing in your life. And we see how you are coordinating this thing. As a people and as a church, we have respect for you. Ah! 
these guys they respect me he said the moment the opportunity they appointed him to the new role said the first people that came to our, his mind is those who have honored him are we getting this thing may god teach you in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah so you're going to honor government official amen and you're going to say you're going to honor the police and the military hallelujah honor the police and the military romans romans 13 7 you're going to honor even your children amen and the lord will give you grace to do it and to do it right and well in the name of jesus ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 amen honor you look for all the people that god has said to you to honor and you set your heart in fact any 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 permit me to use the word idiot can dishonor it takes strength to honor anybody can be can be rude anybody can scatter if you give me this building i can scatter it but tell me to build it now are we getting this it takes courage it takes the spirit of god for you to be somebody who is honoring So let this book of the law be in your mouth. You will meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do all that is written in it. And by so doing, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Is there somebody ready for good success here? You need courage. The courage to abide by what God says and to honor. The Bible says, honor all men. So he doesn't even leave room. And honor those who are in place of authority over you. Some say, therefore, there's levels of honor. May the Lord teach us as a people and as a church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So honor begins from the spirit. Then it's in your thought and in your perception. Then honor manifests itself self in your tongue. In your tongue. How you speak how you speak the bible says the power of death and life is in the tongue he said and those who love it will eat it through so honor is a seed honor is a seed a seed that you can sow with your tongue with what you say i pray that you will not you will also wrong seed in the name of jesus what you say in your tent and what you say outside of your tent a lot of people have the attitude of saying the right thing outside of ten. But in their ten, they say what is wrong. They say the wrong thing. They murmur. Murmur against the, 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 the things God has said for them to honor. They murmur against God. They murmur against institutions of God. They murmur against God's ordinances. They do it so freely. And yet they are expecting God to elevate them. Each one of us we will set our heart and they say well it's my life i'm free to do whatever i like no freedom is not doing what you like freedom is a power to do the right thing you are not free if you do what you like the only one who is free is the one that has the power to live and do the right thing that's why the bible says men ought to pray men ought to pray there's things that you ought to do to be all that God has created you to be. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Um, James chapter 3. James chapter 3 from verse 4. It's about the cargo ship and the rod and the ruder. The cargo ship and the ruder. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 from verse 4. The cargo ship and the ruder. Do you know, like we read in the beginning, that God has prepared your life for glory and honor. Do you know when you were setting sail from the harbor of God, He loaded your life with such grace to make you a significant person here on the earth? The Bible says in Proverbs 31 that she's like a martial ship that's bringing precious things from a far shore. Do you know that's the story of all of our life? Enough for you to have significance, to have glory and honor here on the earth. God loaded you with it. But do you know that you can begin to jettison all those treasures 
with your own mouth and throwing you overboard by the life of the son. In fact, the story of the rudder and the cargo ship is that as small as the rudder is, is what will determine if the cargo ship will arrive at its harbor of destiny. The Bible says, okay, it says, look at the ship. Although they are so large and are, are driven by fierce wind, they are, they, are, they are torn by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Where do you desire? Your tongue is a rudder that will determine where your life is being steered to. And all the load of cargo that you have, may you not go and shipwreck it in the name of Jesus. The destiny of the children that God has placed with you, may your tongue not shipwreck them. The tongue is a terrible instrument for dishonor. Satan began to speak to Eve. And begin to malign God's character in a very subtle way. Do you malign the character of those God has asked you to honor? May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I've come here to tell you that your life is loaded. I've come to ask you to choose honor. I've come to ask you to be intentional about it. That it will not just be a mental accent, something you just know that is right, but that you are not doing anything about. I've come to challenge you this morning. That with your tongue, you can shape your life and your destiny. And the cargo that God has put in the vessel of your life, who arrive at the desired heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then finally, I would just want to touch on this. Because honor can be very subtle. Hon uh, this honor can be very subtle. This honor can be very subtle. I was studying sometime last year, November 15 precisely, because I've got it here on my note. And I was studying about... Um, um, Waiting on the Lord is not is, is an active waiting, not a passive waiting. Waiting on the Lord is an active waiting, it's not a passive waiting. Then I don't know how I got into this subject of looking at um, the word passive. And as I studied on, um, I came to um, a medical news today. Medical news today. Where are the doctors here? Medical news today. And I was just having a read about this element of passive then i came across a term that was described as pab pab passive aggressive behavior pab anybody heard about that before pab passive aggressive behavior yeah? and as the holy spirit began to instruct me the holy spirit took me back because since then i've not had any reason to share this and as i was waiting on the lord as part lord how can i hold these things together because there's so many aspects to this issue of honor and the holy spirit laid in my heart to share this as simply as it is pab passive aggressive behavior he said this honor is very passive and the thing with passive aggressive behavior is that say it can damage relationship and it can make communication difficult say it can cancel forms of aggression which can make it difficult to confront that people expressing passive aggressive behavior often retain the ability to deny that they are they, they are intended they intended their behavior aggressively they say passive aggressive behavior PAB is a coping mechanism that many people use from time to time Especially when they don't, when they want to avoid direct conflict. Then I read Matthew 21, 23 to 27, where the disciple, where the Pharisee refused to answer Jesus' response. And what were the core point of this passive aggressive behavior that revealed this honor? I'm taking it one after the other. It says, lateness. Lateness. It's a passive aggressive behavior 
that if anybody want to enter the place of honor be it at your work be it at church if you don't deal with the issue of lateness even the boss that said that time that this is a time i want you to be here it's one thing for it to happen accidentally on one occasion when it becomes a pattern then it becomes an aggression it's almost like oh yeah come and carry me this is when i want to come and that's when i will come that is a mark of dishonor setting your own time it may look like i'm, I'm not crying i'm not whatever <laughs> i'm just going to arrive when i want to arrive so it's a mark of dishonor number two it says avoidance and this is from medical journal well, i didn't make up this point i just took the point as it were avoidance you know when people begin to avoid that is a passive aggressive behavior it's a mark of dishonor weaponize kindness the type that absalom began to use in israel you know, Absalom became very kind, but he was using it to dishonor his father David. Almost like if I had been king in Israel, you guys will not be going through this kind of thing you're going through. And I will have time for you. It's called weaponized kindness. It's a passive aggressive behavior. You know, you know, when somebody begins to act in such and such a way. Number four, sarcasm. When the comment that has been made by your boss at work, your house fellowship leader, your pastor, or the parents, so many times children do it a lot. Their parents. We just say, uh, let me don't recall the one I used to do because God has delivered me from it. It's a mark of dishonor of the highest order. Your parents have said one, two, three. Then you now go and recall it in a negative way or make a slight comment about it <laughs> mommy's at it again or daddy oh. or is it your pastor it's a dishonoring behavior people who do that they don't go far silence is a passive aggressive behavior answer nothing but for over two years Absalom answered nothing in order to dishonor David answer nothing no I have nothing to say about anything no no I have no view no, 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 it's, it's dishonoring and the Lord will deliver us from it subtle dig when you dig at something just gently at the corner then finally weaponize incompetence just some people you don't do it well the things you could do well with excellence the things you do in other places just because you are the one that asks for it i'm not going to do it well in fact i don't even know how to do it Oh, if it's going to bring me money, if it's my business, ah, that thing, I will, <laughs> you will know that I'm the champion, I'm the one that, that is best at doing it. It's dishonoring. I pray that the Lord himself will deliver us from every manifestation of dishonor in the name of Jesus. Finally, dishonor will be in your actions, conduct, and honor as well is in your action and conduct. There are what they call honor at close quarters. Honors at close quarters. I pray that the Lord will empower us as a people who will be able to honor at close quarters. You see, there are people who can honor people who are distant and far away. Honor at close quarters. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter, chapter 5 verse 22, it says honor at close quarters is that you learn to adapt. So your boss, that new boss, that new area sales manager they brought over you. You learn to adapt to his strategy. That's honor. That's not when you begin to tell him how the former previous sales manager does it. You adapt to him. Adapt to him. 
the Bible even advised that concerning um, um, couples. He said they adapt to one another. By adaptation. He said when, when there's crisis in the jungle, it's not the strongest, it's not the fastest animal that survives. It's the one who is best able to adapt. That's why we don't have dinosaurs anymore. Honor is revealed in adaptation. Oh, this is how I would have loved to do this thing. But because we're a team, or because um, the manager said, look, let's try it this way. We adapt. That's honor. Then, also, honor is revealed in accountability. Your capacity to give account. It's dishonoring to say I answer to nobody. I come when I want to come. I go when I not go. It's a passive aggressive behavior. It's dishonoring. Either to a parent, to an employee, to a church member. When you see me, you see me. The wind go it. Nobody know where you go. You are not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> A passive aggressive behavior you are being very aggressive just the same way satan was very aggressive towards god in genesis when he was speaking with eve every statement he was making was an aggression against the glory of god and if your behavior is aggressing the glory of god god will not glorify you he said you will honor me then will i honor say far be it from me i have planned you for a place of honor before now i change God will change it now. Say, I changed my mind. Deferring. Deferring is a way and action of honor. When you refuse to defer, the Bible say, says, I speak about this relationship between Christ and the church. But husband and wife, you to take a cue from this. Say, the wife must defer. To her husband sometimes the wife has phd the husband is just a school south holder a woman of wisdom a woman of valor defers to her husband oh let me share this quickly some time ago um i was at jesus house by the grace and mercy of god um i just made suggestion to pastor and many times no 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 you can tell the person, no, 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 no. It's suggestion you brought. I will make contact. So, he took me to Jesus' house. Pastor Agu, he summoned Pastor Dupe to Jesus' house. And Pastor Baju saying, eh, hey, that thing, yeah, say it. But naturally, I defer to him. I defer to him completely. Then one occasion, he said I should call your classmate. I said, Nikke, I have his number on my phone. I can't just call him by myself. Call Pastor Shola of Jesus. No, no, no. The fact that they take me there, they take me there. Does not mean me to now unlock his phone and one day I will. No, 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 no. And they say, no, 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 call him. And the moment I'm calling, I'm letting him know that, that actually I've spoken to Pastor Chuka. He's the one that said, I should call you. That's different. He was so delighted. I can't, I can't remember if it's then or after. One day he saw me in Jesus' house. Uh, there are big four years. I was coming in. He was with another big pastor. He said, come, 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 come. He said, do you know this man? <laughs> I said, yes. I know him from far away where you people sit down with you. He said, come and know him in close quarters. He said, human being, touch him, shake his hand. Because when we see that you're somebody not when the pastor says this is time we're doing the prayer meeting then you now have the one no 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 it's better no no benny him does his one at this time that benny him one is better come on then if you were in the train with moses but the god led the children of israel there by the hands of moses it's a human being god will use to lead you then even if you are going to bring bring an idea and things like that 
a wife learns to defer because God has said you should honor you learn to defer and if you look at that passage it says however let each man of you without exception love his wife as being in a sense his own very self let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband say, is it God which one is reverence there for a human being that's dishonoring he said that she notices him women how do you notice your husband huh? is, is God that say you should notice him more Oh, there's a sister there who is noticing her husband. Hello? You notice him. You keep an eye on him. Let me let me give you an example. Do you guys remember um, the mighty men of David? When David was that was testing for the water in the pool of um, the pool of Bethlehem, he didn't even ask them to go and get the water, but they noticed that he was longing for that water. They look at themselves. They communicated with their eyes. The moment David turned away, they went with their sword they fought through the garrison of the philistines to go and fetch the water when they brought it they said what from, from where ah, i said far be it for me that i will drink this water because it's with your blood and your life you went to use to fetch water for me i said i'm not worthy to drink this water david pour it out in reverence and in honor to god it's only he said it's god that you should react that way to god they notice you see the dishonor is that I know this is exactly you want me to do for that. I will not do it. <laughs> ah, Awalagbara. Eh? See, the very thing that you know will bring joy to your boss. That is, eh? I will not do it. Come and carry me. And heaven to, heaven to mark you thereby. Say, is that the life of glory and honor that I call you to? No wonder the, 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 the Bible said they were vagabond, debtors that David picked up. They became the mighty men of David. And their name is lodged on the handles of heaven because they act a worthy of honor. I pray that God will help us on this subject in the name of Jesus. So that with courage and with strength, you set your heart to live a life of honor in keeping with God's word. Hallelujah. I could go on and picking on each of those points that shows how you can honor and dishonor. But I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God will speak to our individual heart. And each of us will begin to evaluate ourselves. In closing, Luke 15, Luke 15 verse 11. It's a popular story, I'll paraphrase it. It's a story of the prodigal son. One of the biggest stories of dishonor in the Bible. The son came to his father and said, Father, give me my hair turned. I'm checking out. I'm tired of this house. No light, no water, no this, no that. Complaining. Can't even get a cold cup of ice water. What he requested for means that, that I wish you were dead. The height of this honor. But even greater shock was the father's response. The father to just carry and give to him. He dishonored the father in such a way he didn't do his own in the back. It was a face to face dishonor. In Israel, a child asks for his father's his inheritance for his father that is still alive. 
It's like uh, uh, um, the king now, uh, 20 years ago, telling mama, mama, pack now, which one? How long do you want me to read? Eh? Quick, quick, go. No, 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 no. The heart of the son. But see how the father responded. She said, okay, okay, okay. I gave it to him. But the father continued to trust God for him. We went to settle some issue in a family. It was a daughter and a mother. Um, Pastor Chika took the daughter to go and minister to her. I took the mother. The mother said, Pastor T, my own child that I gave back to. She said this thing to me. I said, you did not hear it. He said, no, Pastor T. I'm not saying this. See? She said it to my face. Yeah, I said, yeah, that's why I said you didn't hear it. This man has lost all his come with his spirit spirit. I'm saying guru, guru, not somebody told me. Then he tells and I say, Yeah, that's why I say you did not hear. Oh, when the penny dropped, I say, Oh, oh yes, Pastor, I didn't hear it. <laughs> because the day you hear it, that dishonor from your child, that's the day you mortgage are destined to set out to eat. That's why Paul began to avoid them. Brethren, Jew will not say, Jew, Jew will say, weakness is not weakness. Paul said, if I come, I will use my hand. If I respond to what you have said, it's me that will use my hand to destroy you. Say, then what will I rejoice over? Say, you are supposed to be the reed that will wear around my neck. Say, Paul, so Paul said, I will avoid, I will not come through your city. So that me, I don't want to come at face to face, head on, that will force me to respond to the insult and the dishonor. That's when Paul was saying, you may have 10,000 father, you may have 10,000 teacher, but you have one father in me. I said, I know who I am to you. Paul was, as Pastor put it, never took light. <laughs> ah! He said, because of that, I will avoid you. So if I come, I will use my hand to destroy Brother, can I tell you the truth? When you're working in the summer, it's not because they, they don't know. When they avoid you, they don't talk to you. It's a time to trust God. That God in his mercy, he will touch you the way he eventually touched the prodigal son. Do you know if the father went head down with him, the father would destroy him with his own mouth. One word from the father, heaven will open it. Ask the father of the Noah and the son that looked at his nakedness. Became Canaan for that matter because they don't want to issue out a cause, they avoid you. They avoid you. Hey, you say they are with hey, now. Hey, I've, I've given a piece of my mind. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> so come on. They're busy pleading God for your destiny. That's why they avoid you. Paul said, I will not come in this. I come into face to face confrontation with you, and you make me say the thing. Then you that I'm supposed to rejoice over it is not my mouth. The devil will use to launch the arrow to destroy your destiny. So because of that, they just avoid you. They just say, so that they'll say, they'll send your sibling to you. Hey, hey. So eventually, when that mama realized what we were saying, say yes, I did not hear. On that day, you don't want somebody want to commit suicide. It's not every police they send to them. They are special squad. The 10 story building, a child is climbing, want to jump. And you see that the child is serious. It's not the combatant you send to eh? Say, yeah, I Olo will ring me, I beg. Is it what I said? Just forget it. Let's delete it. Because you want to save your seed. Because you want to save your seed. That's why when people want to commit suicide, they send certain things to them. They're not going in with force or with their gun. So okay, what is it? Come, let's talk. No, no, I don't want to talk. I will jump. I will jump. I don't want to talk. jump. Wait first. This one way is like so, so a child who wants to commit suicide. So if you see a backing down, eh, a foolish 
or spiritual person will thank you for strength. If you see a backing down, it's like a Paul avoiding to go come through your city. Least he becomes strong. He said, How do you want me to come? Do you want me to come with blows or with lashes? But later on, he avoided the city. He said, For your sake. So that father, he avoided confrontation with the boy. He said, Perhaps I can lengthen the time. And to the mercy of God, God had mercy. And the Bible said, The Holy Spirit came to him. And came to himself. And he said, Hey, what am I doing here? He said, I will go back to my father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, every true son that has wandered away by dishonor, the Lord will bring back home. Can you speak to God? Can you speak to God today? Can you speak to God? Can you speak to God? There are many sons, true sons, that are in a strange place. The mercy and the compassion of God was revealed in that story. The father was busy waiting, <laughs> interceding and trusting God for his seed. He refused to hear the insult. In the community, they were echoing the insult in his ear. He said, no, my son didn't say that. They said, we well, were there when he was telling you all that thing. He said, no, 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 he doesn't mean it that way. He condescended like a valley. He made excuse for the boy. Can we make excuse? Can we make excuse? Because we are the church of God. We are the house of grace. Can we make excuse? So no, they didn't mean it. You know, he didn't actually say so. No, 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 that's not what he meant. Um, he was just only a little bit upset, that's why. Oh, Lord, oh God, we cry out to God. Even for ourselves, oh God. In every way, Lord God, you have given us two space, space, so that we can recover from dishonor. Father, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you. We bless you today for the room and the space you have given to us so that we can be able to recover from, oh God, a life of dishonor where we have wandered on the wrong track, oh God. Lord, recover our step. Recover us back home, oh God, we pray. All heads bow. All heads bow. I want to pray for a set of people. If there's anybody here, you have challenge with your parents. Um, they, they may not be alive. They are gone. Uh, or they may be alive. You have challenge with them. You believe that you have spoke disrespectfully and dishonoring to them. Can you lift up your hand as we pray today? Because there's liberation in this place. There's liberation in this place. Thank you for being sincere. For everybody, thank you for being sincere over there. Everybody who has different challenge with their parents. In the heat of the passion, as a child, thank you all behind there. In the heat of the passion, you have spoken the way you shouldn't speak. You think because they were drunk, you, you have the liberty to talk to them anyhow. How? Because of the wrong they did, you think you have the liberty to speak to them. One, two, three, four. If you are raising your hand, raise it clearly. Raise it. God is liberating somebody in this place. The God of grace who showed compassion on the prodigal is here. Is here today. Is here today. But you say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I repent in the time of ignorance. I too have spoken in a loose manner to the, to the, to the one who brought me forth. But Lord, forgive me. For, forgive me. Lord, have mercy upon me, O oh God. Can you be praying? Can you be crying out? Can you stop up on your feet and cry out to God? Cry out to God. Say, Lord, deliver me, O oh God, from the consequences of dishonor, O oh God. Lord, set me loose, O oh God. Set me loose, my God, I pray to you, O oh God. Lord, in my in the heat of passion, I have said this to my parents. I have dishonored them. I have discredited them. I have used the liberty of their human element to speak rudely to them. But Lord, please have mercy upon me, my God. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I'm so long top because David didn't give a sound judgment. He has a right to dishonor David. He died. He died. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Oh, oh, I'm told because his father was drunk. That gives him a license to override the ordinance of God. But he became a girl generation. Say, Lord, have mercy on me, oh God. Say, in my foolishness, Lord, I confess I have missed it. Lord, I confess I have missed it in my foolishness. Lord, please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Lord, I repent before you, oh God. I repent before you, I repent for you. Vashita, because her husband was drunk, 
for he gave her license to be rude to him. She was dethroned. Say, Lord, help me not to be dethroned, oh God. Is there somebody? It's you and your spouse. You have spoken in ways that are unbecoming to your spouse. Oh, say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Sometimes, Lord, I convey he does my head in. But, Lord, I convey that I have no right to speak to him the way I have spoken to him. Sometimes, Lord, oh God, he makes me want to lose my mind. But, Lord, oh God, I repent, oh God, for responding the way I responded to him, oh God. Because, oh Lord, you asked me to honor. I am a person of honor. You have prepared glory and honor for me, my God. Lord, please have mercy upon me, oh God. Lord, this is our journey in half a cry. This is our prayer today, oh God. That you will liberate, oh God. You will turn over the consequences, oh God. The consequences, oh God, of, of, of this honor in our life. You will turn it around, oh God. The same way you show mercy. Mercy for the prodigal son. Mercy for him. You waited for him. Patiently until he came back to himself. Lord, today I come back to myself. I come back to myself. Acknowledging you. Acknowledging you. Oh, begin to bring your prayer to the close. Begin to bring your prayer to the close. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All heads bow, all eyes closed. If there's somebody here today, it's a day of salvation. Lord, God has laid in your heart that today is a day of salvation for you. You are not born again and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You might be online, whatever you might be today. You might be in the auditorium. Just lift up your hand before God. Uh, say, Lord, have mercy upon me. If there's somebody you may want to dedicate your life and begin a new world. Lift up your hand before God. I said, Lord, oh God, I rededicate my life. Lord, forgive me. I repent of every sin, of every unrighteousness, of every lawlessness, oh God. I repent of them in the name of Jesus. Lord, receive me back as your own. Even as the Father joyfully received back the prodigal, I pray that heaven will receive you back. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that it has been a blessing to you. For counselling, prayers or to fellowship with us, visit us at RCCG ICC, rear of 31 to 35 High Road, behind Nat West Bank, Romford, Essex, RM6, 6QJ, United Kingdom.